We've got your back on ABC 27 is brought to you by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Welcome back. You can see everyone here in the call center is very busy. The phone lines are open until 8 o'clock this evening. If you don't get through, go to abc27.com slash back pain to send in your question. Now, here is another viewer with question we have for Dr. G.M. Petro. For over two years, I had severe neck pain and was diagnosed with a bulging disc. Over the last year, the pain went away. Can bulging discs repair themselves? Well, a uh, bulging disc represents a diffuse widening of the disc, typically associated with aging, and they don't tend to get better on their own. However, uh, disc herniation, which represents a focal defect in the disc, can and usually does get better on its own, and that typically occurs in the younger patients. Okay, can you tell us what the differences say between a bulging disc and a ruptured disc? Well, a ruptured, a ruptured disc is not a term that we use. Uh, we call that a herniated disc. And uh, the bulging disc, again, is a diffuse widening of the disc, typically associated with a loss of the mechanical properties of the disc, whereas a herniation represents a focal defect, which allows the center of the disc, which is rather gelatinous, to kind of squirt through, and it can pinch nerves or it can even be asymptomatic. Again, the herniation occurs in the younger patients in general, whereas the bulge typically occurs in the elderly population. Okay, here's another viewer question. What type of home exercise would you suggest for sciatic nerve pain? Well, the exact regimen would depend on the exact cause of your sciatica, and you certainly would need to be seen by a spine specialist to determine the cause, and they would then refer you to a physical therapist who would come up with the most appropriate regimen. Okay, and what is sciatica? Sciatica is a term to describe a pinched nerve in the lower lumbar spine that causes nerve pain down your leg. Okay, are there medications that can be used for this? Oh, absolutely. There are uh, anti-neuropathic or nerve pain medications which can help with that kind of pain. And what about surgery? Surgery, there's no question, can help uh, pinch nerve pain by decompressing the nerve. Once again, seeing a spine specialist to talk about what would be the best option for you is probably the best solution? Yes, I would say so. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Jim Petro, for joining us. And we want to thank all of the specialists here this evening for answering your questions. Once again, the phone lines will remain open until 8 o'clock. The number to call is 346-3333. And we'll send it back to you in the studio, Val. Thank you, Deborah, Dr. Ryder. There are several spine centers in the area. So what makes Penn State Hershey Spine Center stand out? I think there's really three main reasons. One is that... Um, you know, we really are comprehensive. We have all sorts of specialties. We have rehab medicine, we have neurology, we have anesthesia. A lot of them are certified in pain management, which is an extra certification they get. We have orthopedic surgery, we have neurosurgery. So we really have all the, the specialties covered. The second thing is, you know, we're all, it's an academic practice. I mean, our lives are devoted to teaching and learning. And I think, and I think that really helps and we really work extra hard to, to help people. Um, and then finally, you know, it is convenient. We do have the main campus location and we're also over in Camp Hill too. And is it difficult to get an appointment at the Spine Center? Is there a long waiting list at this point? No, we have plenty of practitioners. So if you call, there's plenty of people that we can get somebody in to see somebody. So tell me a little bit more about the Camp Hill office. Uh, that's newer. We, uh, we have uh, a bunch of specialists, both surg uh, surgeons and non-surgeons who go out there to evaluate patients. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's working out really well going across to the, uh, the other half of the river, I mm -hmm. guess, crossing the river over there and, uh, and seeing people. I think that's across the river, isn't it? Yes, it is, okay. across the river. <laughs> and what should a patient expect during that first appointment? Things can be a little nerve wracking sometimes. Yes, yes, so they have to expect a lot of questions. So first, when they get there, they're gonna get some questions, just kind of basic questions for us to get some background on them, and that'll be done by probably one of the medical assistants. Um, then the practitioner will come in and talk to them listen to them, mm -hmm. hear the problems they're having, and, and start kind of formulating an idea of what, what they think the problem may be. After that, they'll get into physical examination to really you know, look at their strengths, see how they walk, really kind of evaluate what they can do and what they can't do. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll look at the studies that they have already, what they've brought in with them. That could be x-rays, that could be an MRI, a CT scan, and if possible, even look at those studies with the patient and, and kind of show them what the findings are. And then finally, um, come up with a plan. You know, it could be actually you need more studies, mm -hmm. but also it could be, you know, this treatment would be correct. And the difference between an MRI and a CAT scan? An MRI is, is, is a magnetic, mm -hmm. so it's, it's actually magnets and it's figuring out what the tissue is. What you see best on MRI is the soft tissue, so you see the nerve roots, you see the spinal cord. 
a CAT scan is radiation, and you're really looking at the bones, so you're seeing the hard structures on that. So you actually see different things on both studies. And are sometimes both studies used? Absolutely, absolutely. Because sometimes if you're looking at an MRI, there may be something pushing into the nerve root, and you can't tell, well, that could be really hard, dense bone, right. or that could be a disc herniation. So, oh. you know, they're, they're, they complement each other. Now, are there any new treatments for spine problems that are available now, or do you think are right on the horizon? Yeah, uh, you know, the, the stuff that I think is what people are talking about most now is trying to save motion, so motion sparing procedures, and that would be like a disc replacement. There's something called an X-stop, which uh, kind of sits in between the bones, and, and it limits the motion, but doesn't mm -hmm. stop the motion. Um, and I think those are a, a lot of, you know, are good things for the spine, because the spine wants to move. The spine doesn't want to be fused. Um, another thing would be just kind of minimal access. You know, you want to make as small of incisions as possible. Split muscle if you can split muscle. You know, try not to make it so much pain postoperatively. And then, and then finally, you know, I think the kind of the thing that most people are excited about is like the restorative medicine. You know, mm -hmm. let's inject something so you make a new disc. And that's, I mean, that's way mm -hmm. in the future. And, and there's research in that now, you know, but that, that would probably be the most exciting thing. How do you know the difference between something's really wrong with your back or you're just getting older? <laughs> <laughs> that's a very tough question. But, you know, I think any symptom that really, one, if it's just, if it really, really hurts and you just can't even walk, then you need to find somebody. But the other thing is if it doesn't go away after a week or so, you know, you can, you know, if you take some Tylenol or take mm -hmm. some Motrin and, and just still hurt. And what can we do to prevent spine problems? I know heels, big culprit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on now. Yes. Um, well, the prevention, I think the, the main thing with that is really regular exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just staying in shape, keeping the core muscles strong, your abdominal muscles, your low back muscles. Sit-ups. Yes. Back strengthening. Okay. Planks, those, all those are very good, the big exercise ball. Um, as we sit here, good posture. Mm -hmm. We have to sit here with good posture, very important. You know, even when you're picking things up, you want to use your legs. You don't bend over at the waist to pick things up. And there's actually, there was a study done that people limited their bending forward, and that was shown to help back pain. Um, diet. Yes, what should we put in our diets? Healthy diet. I mean, you know, you should eat calcium. Uh, calcium and and uh, it just, it's a balanced diet. You know, it, it's moderation. You had mentioned heels. And right. it's just like that. I mean, those heels. Anything in moderation is probably okay. I mean, you don't want to wear heels all the time. All right. Well, you thank know. you, doctor. I want to thank you for joining us today. And we also want to thank you, our viewers, for sharing your stories and sending in your questions. If you would like more information or would like to schedule an appointment at the Penn State Hershey Spine Center, call 717-531-3767 or visit at pennstatehershey.org spine. Thanks for watching tonight. We wish you very good health.